Mind you, we swore an oath of loyalty. It's not more speeches in the Senate that will change the world. Rome is dying. My legions are mustering as swiftly as possible. Senators, welcome back to episode 44 in my Stellaris Roman Empire campaign. In the last episode, we kept up the pressure against the vassals of the Awakened Empires, and finally defeated the Ancient Eradicators, capturing approximately 500 pops in the process, about half of which are robots and will be dismantled while the other half are now slaves and have been distributed across the Empire. In between episodes, I designated Tulianum, one of our recently conquered worlds, to be the Empire's penal colony. Tuliana will be the staging ground for the Empire's criminals, and also be considered a holding planet for slaves who have yet to be designated a planet to work. The war rages on, as does the nebulous storms across the galaxy. Several of our attack moons are nearing completion, while we continue to bolster our fleet's strength and prepare for war with the Awakened Empires. So let's take a look at Tuliana really quickly. It is super overcrowded. I basically moved pretty much every pop I could that was a slave to this planet. So it's going to be hurting for stability. It's got extremely high crime because we created the penal colony, which cost actually, I think it was 100 influence? Might have been 200. No, it was 100 influence, yeah. So that's going to reduce crime on all of our other planets, giving us kind of that moment to kind of, uh, that kind of brief time to sort out any extra slaves or overcrowding we may get. And here we'll just focus on building up precinct houses to manage the crime and also then slave processing facilities, extra housing, and things like that. So this can be our staging ground to move the pops out of this planet once it's done. Um, so it's going to have some a bit of a tumultuous start to it, but I think I've ordered it up in a way that should mean that everything kind of balances out in the future. For anyone wondering where this planet is, it is the one of the southernmost planets in the entire galaxy, or systems, I should say. Pretty, pretty far south. There might be one or two of the systems a little bit further down than this, and maybe in future... For roleplay, we'll sever its hyperlane and maybe only make it accessible through a gateway or something. That'd be kind of cool. So essentially, this is like a prison cell. Now, you might notice it's actually under the control of the Order of Enlightenment right now. I'm just going to turn down that music real quick. So we're going to go get it back. We obviously have the planet. They just must have taken the system quite quickly. But we'll come back in and take it back, no problem. Now, in between episodes, so I, I went back and I looked at the footage of the last one. We started with less than just under, I think, or maybe just over 3,000 pops. So we gathered so many pops in the previous episode. And of course, we have 268 ancient eradicators located in various planets and actually redistributed them to lots of different planets all over the Empire so that they could be dismantled even faster. It basically takes about three to four months to just uh, kind of destroy one of their pops. So I thought, okay, we can only do one at a time per planet, so let's ship them out to pretty much every planet I could. It costs a lot of energy to do that because there's so many of them. Now, there's still a few planets that are going to house and harbor quite a lot of them out here somewhere, but to a large extent, we've moved the bulk of them across the Empire. So we should see in the next year, I would all, I would say at least half of them just completely die um, and be dismantled and taken apart. And that should help lower our Empire sprawl. And then we're also going to try to increase the administrative capacity. I've got that um, in the works as well. So that's kind of the situation behind the scenes or in between episodes about what's going on. Now, we left off with our attack moon, uh, Diana's Wrath kind of about to chasing down the Irabot Incorporators. So it's actually kind of interesting. I never even really paid attention to it, but they are actually a Megacorp, I guess, kind of. I mean, they're not. They're just all consciousness, but they're Irabot Incorporators, Catalog Index. They have the Megacorp, Megacorp flag. I don't know if it's all just coincidence, but it's kind of an interesting okay. uprising nevertheless. Uh, nevertheless. Anyway, we're hunting them down with one of our attack moons, so the chase is on, although there are storms across multiple systems here, so it's slowing us down even further. We're basically going to go to the Gatori Black Hole, Loisar, and then see where they go and try to intercept them. Now, I'm not sure, but it seems like we may have fought a battle and lost. I don't know what happened to these guys, but they they must have, yeah, they must have gotten engaged by, that, by their fleet, by the enemy fleet. I must have missed it. i never seen it. I'll get to see comments after the fact. I didn't scan through the episode to find that or anything, but I just noticed that 
They're obviously after taking some damage. Class is six here. Their health is extremely low on a lot of the ships, and they've made it back to Saul. I don't know really how I let that happen, but I must have... I think I jumped the fleet into Astarope, and they must have come up there and, and taken them out, essentially. So we might have suffered a little bit of a defeat that I totally missed. So we're going to send them back up to the Field of Mars, get repaired, and uh, get replenished as well. Now, meanwhile, in the south, we have the Juggernaut that's made its way down. We want to jump this Juggernaut straight across into this fleet. This is Classes 3. This is the one that had the difficult battle. So we'll send them out, link them together, get this one healed, and continue what we're doing down here against the Order of Enlightenment. And in the meanwhile, we have our transports, the Spartans, on the way to Jardlafon to land on their planets down there. In fact, just in case we get hit by the Spaceborne Amoeba, we'll just skip over and do a jump. Alright, so that's pretty much it. That's where we've left off. We're going to be continuing. The, obviously, the goal is to just clear up any of these final patches here. Where's Opsius? Opsius is back here. I might send him... Oh, interesting. He's actually going to the Opsius station. I'm actually going to send him back to the Starfield of Mars as well to get patched up. And he should be fine. Alright, cool. Let's continue. By the way, I don't know if I'll do a debate this time or next episode, but rather interestingly, a lot of people have been saying... I didn't get to read the previous comments, but before that, they were saying, you've got a lot of pops that I, I feel some of these should be given residency status. Now... I just fundamentally disagree with that. <laughs> but maybe I should put it to the vote. Obviously, for gameplay, things would be a lot easier if we just gave everybody residency and just, like, let it happen, right? That'd be fine. Everyone would take the specialist jobs. They still wouldn't be rulers or anything like that, but they would help. it would help us out immensely, right? Yes, yeah, so that's, that's true. But I just don't feel like any of these empires deserve residency status. Everyone within the Pax Romana has residency status, you know? Everyone within the League of Non-Line Powers doesn't, right? Kosher Trade League don't... Actually, Kosher Trade League do, the Maori, but the other um, races don't, the um, Dakarite and things like that. I don't know, I just feel like it's a bridge too far to be like, oh, you know what, we'll just let them do their thing. I still feel like we can grow, we're growing humans pretty much on every planet, and then I'm redistributing them where they need to go, and then I'm bringing in all these slaves that we're getting, and putting them to work as the workers. I think it's totally fine, it's heavy micro in between episodes, it takes actually quite a long time, but for the roleplay of it, I think it's much more important that it be done that way. But maybe I'll put it to the vote, and let you guys decide, but I think you should consider that, you know, consider that. What citizenship means, what residency status means. That's the best citizenship we can offer without changing our government. And speaking of, actually, um, I've been saying for a while that I can't reform the government because the Legionary Tradition Civic is kind of bugged. It is kind of bugged. It's it's red text or whatever. I can't, I don't think I can, um, I don't even want to test it. I, I don't know if I can remove it or not. Anyway, long story short, I can add things and then reform the government. So we could actually get one more thing. So I might do that. Um, I don't know which one we'll get. We'll have to have a look through it, but I think I will be taking on one when I can. I actually don't have that much influence right now, and that's because I've changed around our edicts. I took off Fleet Supremacy, uh, which was giving us ship build speed increase, ship starting experience 100, and diplomatic weight from fleet power 10% at the expense of 10% upkeep for ships. So I've taken off Fleet Supremacy, and instead I put on Forge Subsidies, which gives Metallurgist's output 10%. So all of our alloys... We're getting 10% out of it now. Uh, so now we're making over 3,000 per month. So that extra 10% has helped out quite a bit. Um, so I just wanted to do that because we're in desperate need of more and more alloys all the time. Class is three here. If we were to rebuild it, it's going to cost 30,000 alloys. So it's just like, wow, that's like half, half of everything we've saved up just gone straight away. Now I'm not going to do that because I need to have a look through these fleets and consider what we need to do. And we're also still building up new moons and, and progressing them. Th sorry, I keep hitting the microphone. And keep progressing them through their different stages and stuff like that. So all of this kind of has to be factored in. And then we want to get maybe a Giga Forge or I can't remember what they're called. A Nidvalair Giga Forge, I think, at one point. So whenever we get that technology, I'll be wanting to build that. Anyway, hopefully that catches everything, everyone up on everything. Let's let time play and continue on. In fact, we'll keep the outliner open. I'll just hide the planets. We don't, really don't need to see it. It doesn't do anything for me at this point seeing it. Um, but we do need to see kind of the military fleets and the army. So we'll keep it about there. Make sure everyone's moving. So class is four. Where are you and what are you doing? They're protecting the transports here. These transports are all moving. This one isn't. 
Let's get a new commander on this one. Actually, hang on. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah, you know what? You two can meet up here. Cases conquerors can uh, merge just because they're a bit weak. So we can go up to 41. I should make them pretty strong. And then... S uh, yeah, we've, I think I've told these to link up together. Good. Wait, are they already linked? Why is there two different? Assault army and legion. There's assault army. Oh, maybe I built that by mistake. I'm kind of confused. Yeah, I guess so. I guess not everyone's a legion. Some are just assault armies. Hmm. Must have been a mistake. I, guess, I think they're still human. Alright, anyways. Um, I'll have to move them somewhere. Yeah, it seems to be the case. Yeah, sorry. I was just... No, I am I am right. Assault army... Le oh, no, but they're called legio. That's the thing, yeah, because it's the Roman name. Okay, right. Sorry, I got confused for a second. They, I must have built assault armies by default when I saw... And then, obviously, they get the name Legio, whatever. They all get their Legion names. Uh, whereas our actual Legions get called Limitane. Um, so, okay. Anyway, it's a bit of a minor thing. All right, let's move this um, transport fleet down as well, then. All right, cool. All right, so, primary focus right now is to take out the last remaining... Oh, wow. Take out the last remaining pockets of territory that we haven't yet got. I'm going to wait for that because another one should pop up in a couple days, I think, because we built two together. So take out this last little bit of territory we can, take out the territories up here if we can, and then get our four attack moons hopefully together, or even maybe just two, we'll see how we feel, and then start pushing towards either the Corinth Restorers Engaging or the Carillion Regulators. Station. Now that we have the 25% damage benefit, oh, obviously then build up our fleets a bit stronger and upgrade their technology. So that's kind of the, the, the goal right now. There we go, there's the second one. So the two of them are both done at Hithara. So 6,000 alloys. There we go. One's going to get done a day before the other. All right, cool. Oh, we could build another one of those Giga Forge things down here. Let's see how much it would cost just to start that even now. Ah. We have to remove the mining station. Uh, wrong thing. <laughs> to remove the mining station, then we can see. Because we have a basic Giga Forge, we just don't have the big one that I, I kind of was waiting for up in the north. Neutronium Giga Forge construction site, 64 influence, 3,000 alloys, and by the end, it'll make 220. I just don't think it's really worth it to only make 220. Because I'm pretty sure the big one makes like 2,000. So, I'll wait. I don't need to be building that. Uh, in fact, let's just build the thing I removed then. Let's get that back. Alright, good. Moon takes flight. Oh, wow. One of the other ones is done. Oh, is this the one that... System whatever? Yes, System 2872. We have another one. Oh, well, that was way quicker than I thought. I didn't pay attention to that in the last episode. Right, now we've got two. And this is also a frozen attack moon. I'll be quite interested to see... I doubt it's going to be different, but the other ones aren't frozen moons. I wonder will be will there anything be different about it? All right, that's two. So we're going to send this back up to Sol and get it leave it there at the gateway so it can get ready to go through because of course we're building a gateway out at Rubicon. So where are we with that? Cool. Just over a year remaining and then everything kind of comes through. So we can be over the star field of Mars, build everything we need and then just basically eject everything through Rubicon, cross the Rubicon so to speak and yeah, I get pushing towards towards the uh, car and through stores. All right, cool. Things are lined up. Getting lined up anyway. All right, so the fleets, the juggernaut is here. Let's just enter orbit. Just tell to go there. Link these two bad boys together and they should heal pretty quickly. We have seized an enemy world. We seized an enemy world. Invasion successful at Lavathos. Lavos. Lathbos. Okay, there must be another thing here. Yep. Crambon. Easy. Okay, so the attack moon. There's the enemy. That's who we're trying to get to. So let's go to Loisar. 
the storm it looks so cool around the black hole as well love it all right good things are actually running pretty well as well that's nice to see um so yeah then we're going to check back in on the juggernaut all right great so they're there chilling healing Engaging hostile fleets. pretty quickly and uh, we can even give the upgrade order because why not while we're waiting here Engaging hostile fleet, what do we got? 59,000 just against the starbase. Nothing too crazy. Take the shot. Commencing planetary invasion. We've got two dreadnoughts and five carriers and five battleships. There we go. That's what I like to hear. The base. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, cool. Really not much left now. I keep saying that in the last episode, but that's just when I zoom out. I'm like, yep, it's getting smaller. <laughs> that's going to be clipped out of uh, context. All right. Towards the center. And then we... Oh, yeah, so we've taken that. Then we need to come back down here. This says Roman Empire, but it has their flag. I guess it's because we've got the planet, but they have the system. So once we get the system back, it's all good. So a Tullianum. I named it Tullianum, by the way, because... The Mamertine prison, I think in Rome, was called Tullianum? I think so. I think that's where I got the name from. Anyway, this being our penal colony, the first thing I'm building is a slave processing facility, which I think should lower down their political power and hopefully increase stability. I think so. Then we're going to be like hammering out precinct uh, houses to get some enforcers. Then we're also going to get some city districts to increase the housing because it's a disaster right now. Then some more precinct houses, uh, city district, again, senate house to just raw stability, basically. Precinct houses, uh, just loads of them, and then we're going to upgrade some of them, just have lots of crime and enforcers, uh, crip, not crime, what do you call it? People that can deal with crime, just, they're just called enforcers. And hopefully that should um, help this place lower its crime down over time and stabilize the planet, even though it's super heavy on crime. But the good news about this planet is it lowers crime everywhere else, so it's pretty valuable. And it's just a planetary decision that we would have got through a technology a while back. Dacorite Fragments becomes the new owner of the Crambon planet, so we must have succeeded at taking that. Yep. Excellent job. Alright, so we could go to Rigel, or... Yeah, let's go to Viz. Levos. No problem there. Cleaning up this territory. The Dacorite Fragments should consider, themse consider themselves thankful. Also, I didn't mention in the previous episode, but the League of Non-Aligned Powers... We're gaining pretty nicely now. Our cohesion's built up almost full. However, there's 8,600 XP to go, and we only get 10 per month when we max this out. So that's like, I don't know, 60 years before we hit the next level. It's a long time. There's no way to speed it up. I really hope that when this war in heaven ends, these guys don't all just leave, or if they do leave, we don't suffer a cohesion penalty, because that'd be so unfair, in a way, to like suffer a massive cohesion drop and have to like take more time and build stuff more back up because 60 70 years before we can get that damage to end game you know i'm no mathematician but that's past the date that an end game might happen uh, or is likely to happen so i need that <laughs> i feel like anyway um so i'm a bit worried about that that's just something i'm keeping an eye on it's like oh if that gets cut in half again like that's like another 20 years that could add on to it and at 60 it's already a lot so we'll see how that goes. Dynamic core igniter hypercoils built. All right, cool. Are we healed up? They're healed up. Excellent. They're not upgraded though just yet. They're about 30% upgraded. Okay, It'll take a little time. Um, bear with me one sec. I'm gonna have to remember to cut this here. But I just want to let my cat in. She's scratching at the door, so I'll let her in. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Um, I've actually put a little thing on the PC that means she can't turn off the button either, so we're good. All right, cool. Okay, all good. We're all healed. Is that a repair? Upgrade? No. Okay, so that was just the healing. Under attack. And we seem to be doing pretty good for the invasions as well. Just trying to see. Well, I guess we could just check here. So, Kesos Conquerors. They're not doing anything at the moment. We're going to link them with the others that are here, so let's link them up. So that's no problem. 
Um, I guess there's nowhere really to bring them. Bring bring them over on this side. We'll just have to, I don't know, keep them back for a bit. Just leave them there. Just don't want them getting caught by something that gets behind me, which I don't see. All right, and then we have Transport Fleet 3. Let's just call this Epius's... This is Epius's legions. Okay, so Aulus Epius, 51. So he's heading south, and he's going to get involved on some of the planets down here. I mean, I guess I could send Case of the Conquerors out that way too, right? No reason why not. They could take a gateway and get through probably pretty quickly, I would imagine. Either way, we'll just send them down this way and see if they can get here. We already have the planet here, which is good, so I don't know. Let's just send them there. We'll decide what to do with them later. The Spartans aren't doing anything, so they've done their job over on this side. So I guess we can make a jump to Hyzar. How long do we have to wait? 44 days. Alright, let's just queue them up to get moving, I guess. Actually, you know what? Just stop. I'll remember to use you quicker that way. Still looking for a volcanic world, man. I thought that I thought that was it for a second. It really looked like it was gonna be. Man, check out the strike craft. The Nexus. Oh, this is the capital of the Order of Enlightenment. This is their capital. Alright, we're losing a lot of our edicts, so I'm gonna have to get them back. Um but we need the Empire Sprawl just to get a little bit better before we do. Commencing planetary invasion. Alright, planetary invasion, let's go. So this is Levos. Should be no problem. Okay, cool. We're one system over now from the Erebot Incorporators. Let's see which way they're going. They're just coming to the center of the system right now. So let's get that attack moon and get moving. Is it that the right place? Yes, it is. All right, let's get moving. This is the big one. So our fleet strength is like way less than it was back in, I guess, our home system. It's just so, such a, so unfortunate. You know, we had a million fleet power. Now we've got like 700 and maybe 800,000, I guess. Just doesn't feel as good, but um, not much we can do about that. Now, if I bring my juggernaut with us and we put a certain proper module on it, we could maybe increase its power quite a lot. So obviously I'll be doing that in future. So there's only, you know, 88,000 here. We still are outnumber them 10 to 1, pretty much. But I would just be curious Three to see the... Upgrades applied. See how the planet or the mo attack moon does, especially attacking some of these bigger ships. See if we can one-shot them out of it. Or see if I can planet even notice conquered. that. Planet conquered. So that is Levos. Let's just move to... Um, here. All right, good stuff. All right, we're almost there. Let's see this bad boy in action. Diana's Wrath. Now the other attack moon, so I can't remember what they wanted me to name it. They gave two examples. Honestly, I don't even know what to name the one after this. What the hell is... Station under attack. It's quite the um, jump. Interestingly, the other fleet jumped first. It's unfortunate. They're probably going to kill everything before the even attack moon even gets here. Yeah, it's going to take 28 days for the moon to jump. God damn. Oh, wait. It's here. Never mind. Oh, it was 28 days to get to the center. Okay, cool. Well, it's here now. Let's slow some time down. See if we can see it fire. It's turning. It's in the fleet combat. Oh, you can see all the strike craft, the lunar craft, leaving it now. That's cool. I wonder, does it have the range from here? Probably not to do what it needs, but it's it's not moving. What was that? Oh, these are the whirlwind missiles. I was <laughs> like not even watching the combat. I'm just curious to see what comes out of the moon, to be honest. Yeah, it didn't fire its big gun. The Omega Annihilation Lance. 100% accuracy. Range 250. I think it's just sitting too far back right now. But it's not moving either, so I don't know. I can't put anything on it to tell it to move forward. It just has its basic combat computer. War Moon AI. 
It'll stay at a very long range, 250, and fire its Omega Annihilation Lance at available targets. Okay. Well, unfortunately, we didn't get to see it fire. That's a lot of debris, though. Let's see what we did. Oh, strangely, we only took out one destroyer? No, that can't be right. I can see them. They're all here, aren't they? All these ships? These are all... Well, some of them are mine. But these ones, these lithoid ones, surely. Are enemy ships that have been destroyed. Sorry about that. A few interruptions every now and then. I'm recording quite late, and... Um, Rosie, my girlfriend's gone back to work, so... She's just trying to sleep, and our cat is just... Um, Freaking out lately for she basically she needs to be spayed. She's like in heat, she's scratching doors and stuff, so it's a bit weird. That's why she keeps coming in and out and why she's been showing up at episodes lately. But what can you do? Um But yeah, we're gonna have to get her spayed. I thought we thought like maybe we could just leave her for a while, but um Cause I don't know, we we're thinking maybe in the future she might we might want to have kittens with her or something, but um I didn't realize, or we didn't realize, that she just goes in heat every three weeks and freaks out for like three or four days and just constantly meows and <laughs> rubs her butt up against stuff and everything, so it's, she's funny. <laughs> now, I'm a bit confused about this combat report, right? Look at all these ships. We can see that they're all clearly destroyed. Like, there's so many of them. Clearly, have all been demolished. And this is the... And these are the guys. Did I? Am I reading it wrong? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here we go. Oh, I must have totally... Did I just completely not see that or did it not show up? I don't know. Either way, we can see in the secondary fleet here, Osis Machine Fleet. That's more like it. We've destroyed a lot. Titans, carriers, dreadnoughts, all destroyed. All the transport ships are gone. Yeah, I guess... Um, I don't know what I did, but I must have read it wrong. That is insane if I only saw that part. Because in my mind's eye, looking like thinking back on just a few minutes ago... All I saw was this number and I didn't see anything else, so I don't know if I was actually that blind. But there, anyway, that's their entire second fleet pretty much destroyed and these will just like kind of detonate and blow up now. So let's get back to the job at hand uh, and just continue our route. Uh, clearing up these territories. Uh, I guess loading out, loading in, I guess the thing's um, destroyed. All right, they're probably going to reappear down here, actually, so I should get this fleet to go down and take that system as quick as possible. If they've no starbase, I don't know where they're going to, where that fleet's going to kind of reappear at. All right, let's speed things back up. Okay, all right, everything's looking pretty good. And we haven't had any messages of planets having problems or anything like that. So, the Senate floor is voting on to relocate the galactic markets. So we've got the 180,000 diplomatic weight there, which is, almost, which is almost four times as strong as the second behind us, which is the Kosher Trade League. So, we have massively pulled ahead. Especially considering we turned off the edict to give us power, you know, fleet power, uh, diplomatic weight from fleet power. It's kind of crazy. Alright, let's just make sure our armies are doing stuff. Epius' legions are here now. Actually, you know what? We can get you to jump somewhere a bit better. Jump in there. They should be ready to jump now. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we'll be really rapidly landing on planets now, I think. That's okay. We're just giving stuff back to the Dacorite fragments. It's really not a big deal. Oh, it's the new year. 2415. All right, cool. All right, let's keep landing on planets. Lesser stain. <laughs> okay. And uh, these are legions. These are Limitani. Okay, we're raising legions again. Good. You know what? Actually, we'll just decommission them. They're too small. I don't think we're actually making any more. We've got plenty now. In the galaxy, hopefully enough. We can always make more if we need more. So we got caught in combat here. This fleet's going to need to come up as quick as possible. Lucius Obsidius. After making a mistake with them again.
That's all right. I mean, it's going to take a while for this guy to get there. The Bari awakens psionic capabilities or ab abilities. All Bari through the galaxy have undergone a great change. Whereas before their latent psionic power had only blossomed in a small minority, the entire species is now has now unlocked its full psionic potential. Although these changes seem to have originated in the Order of Enlightenment, they've now manifested in all, all members of their species regardless of where they reside. Aside from displaying an array of powerful psionic abilities, Bari have started to forego verbal communication with each other in favor of telepathy. Mm. So that's the Order of Enlightenment species. It's gonna take us 90 days to get there. Surely they've got someone that can jump. He can't jump. Ah, you can jump. You can get over there and save them. Class is three. Off you go. I guess, I'm guessing their upgrade is done. Unrest at Combine. That's not a big deal. We don't need to New waste time discovered. looking at those things. It's fine. All right, what, what's left? So this, this, so we own, we own everything in terms of systems. It's just, we just need to land on planets now, except for here. We'll have to do a jump into that one. And is that it then? I think that might be it. All right, it's just a series of planets that we need to land on now. So let's get the job done as quick as possible. All right, so they've done their jump. Oh my God, there's so many to land on all the time. Let's check. Two. Two and one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, you go for here. There we go. Divide and conquer. Take all three at the same time, and then out here at Hizar, how many do we have? Just the one. Gagush. Okay, good. That's the time plate. Construction online. They don't know where to go. They've got nowhere to go. Convincing planetary invasion. And we took out the system here. Oh no, we haven't yet. Let's go. I can't remember the name of that person asked her. It's Diana's Wrath and something Spear. A Roman god of some sort. Hey, Super Earth Planetary Body Manipulation, the behemoth planet craft. The attack moon was thought to be the pinnacle of absurdly large spacecrafts, but we can go further. If we combine several incredibly advanced technologies from strong force manipulation to gravity stabilization, it becomes possible to upscale the attack moon to 3,000 kilometers to a much, much larger bo body of 15,000 kilometers diameter, I'm assuming, or even more. Such an incredibly massive spaceship would be near indestructible and could wipe out entire fallen empires by itself. Ah, oh, interesting. Why does it mention that specifically? <laughs> well, that's pretty cool. So we can now look for some. Uh, let's just, I'm just trying to think what we go with. Kinetic weapon attack speed. Let's get this one just for the alloy storage capacity. The Alderson disc. Not, I don't think we're going to be building an Alderson disc, but still. So... Edicts. Whoops. Locate behemoth planet craft candidates. A survey of our empire's various large planets have been concluded. All potential behemoth planet craft candidates have been catalogued and can now be found in the expansion planner. Does it have a different symbol? I'm guessing. I just feel like I just went by it. Attack Moon Candidate, Behemoth Planetcraft, so these ones. Mira 3. There's one at Elysium. Elysium 4. Hell yeah, let's go. Let's see what we need. It's probably gonna take ages. But you gotta start somewhere. So, Planetary Computing Complex, no. Uh, macro Engineering Test Site, Behemoth Planet Craft Construction Site, 8,500 alloys, 85 influence. It's gonna take about three years. Just under, well, uh, just over two. All right, cool. It doesn't take, planetary invasion. Maybe that's not the best construction ship to do it. 
you go up there and you can go do it. So it was in Elysium, right? Elysium 4. Here we go. That just should get us started a little bit quicker. All right, cool. That's awesome. Commencing planetary invasion. All right, our invasions are taking place. Planetary invasion successful. Yep, some we of them have seized an enemy world. Some of them are going to be really quick. Interesting, I can't tell them to land, can I? I can. Good. Just keep adding more and more troops to this planet. Just to get the commander down there as well, helping out, because this one's got its battle currently going on. It's total overkill, but it has to be done. Planet conquered. The legions are doing it without a general as well. Alright, the troops are landing down. There's only three defensive armies. Come on. Time is just moving a bit slowly. There we go. They've landed. Unemployment on Lesser Stain. It's not really our problem, considering it's Dakarite territory. A lot of habitats that the AI seems to have been building. Let's clear up some of these notifications. Alright, that's all good. Alright, and Gagushk has been taken taken as well. So now we'll move to all of these. Jeez, Christ, there's so many. Bow again, gold grass, leafy, bulb. Well, we're about to come in with the ones coming out of Furnitopia as well. I can't believe there were so many pops. What are the ancients on now? 196. So they're on about 260, I think, before. So 70 of them have died. We're being dismantled. Planet conquered. All right, great. Commencing planetary invasion. Let's get you into the system, then we'll divide you up. Planet conquered. <laughs> We're just flying through them now. It's crazy. All right, good stuff. Uh, let's take a look at the fallen empires. It's been a while since we had a look at the awakened empires, I should say. See if we're in trouble out there. Um, interestingly, we actually can't quite see where they're at right now. Oh, we've got the broken clock system, though. I must have pulled away the uh, construction ships out here. Let's get building. Now, out of interest, do we have our century array? Oh, we can upgrade it. We are at century aerials. All right, let's upgrade it. Eight and a half thousand again. And that was for the century array, right? That was the final stage, I think. I think, I think it was. Which, if that's the case, I think it just uncovers everything. So, we should be able to see where the where they are at all times, basically. Oh, I should—I failed to mention as well, but um, I've obviously reduced and removed as many star bases as I could in between episodes, so we're pretty good on that front as well. Uh, a lot of the slaves that I moved around, I actually moved to Hellas, uh, to different places, just to, just to put them down somewhere. So, for instance, um, is it Delos? Delos has like energy and stuff like that, so lots of jobs for uh, clerks. Sorry, not energy. What is it? Commercial. So lots of clerk jobs. So these are all the slaves that would have been moved out of the empires that we're kind of pushing into now. So let's just kind of keep feeding into them, I guess. They're getting more built. Yeah, so there, there should be plenty of room for all that stuff in future. Good. We're just getting messages about all the new planets, really, more than anything. All right, so this is all being conquered as well. All good. So, classes three. I think we're just about done out here. So, we can send you back to the Starfield of Mars. Everyone's going to get their major upgrades up there, which is going to be great. Oh, no. Actually, classes three needs to make a jump to that system. Yeah. Because the others can't. All right, that's fine. All right, great. A new species. Many of the human Nova inhabitants of Tulianum have turned to genetic modification to help them cope with the planet's hostile environment. The changes they've made to themselves are being passed on to their offspring, and their physical appearance is changing at an alarming rate. They've started referring to themselves as metahumans. Or metahuman Nova. Uh-oh. I don't like that. So that's interesting. I thought maybe someone else genetically modified them. If they're doing it to themselves, it's kind of interesting. Which I can understand why. This is an Arctic world. Humans aren't probably thriving on this one, but we could change it to continental. So let's do that. We have reduced crime a little bit. Now, while you're um, terraforming, 
planet pop pops on the planet get pretty unhappy about that. So we've gotten one of our precinct houses is done. It's good. City district is next to help alleviate the housing crisis. And then in between episodes, I'll be pulling loads of slaves off this planet if I can. That's the that's the idea. But I guess if I just have to feed more slaves into it, it's probably always going to be quite busy or full. No point taking slaves off and then just putting more on. I guess we'd move the other ones first. But it's a good place to hold them for now, even either way. All right, so we made it to the system. Let's um divide up this group. So you go for Leafy. You go for Bulb. You go for Bow. All right, you divide. One of you is going to go to Future. And the other one is going to go for this last planet or place here, Goldgrass. Now, just to double check before we send anyone to their deaths, there's no armies there, no armies there, none there, there, or there. <laughs> All right, it's going to be pretty quick then. We're literally just occupation forces at this point. I see a lot of planet conquered messages, I guess. Commencing planetary invasion. Incoming transmission, yes, I'll extend the deal. Thank you. All right, Bo has been conquered. Planetary invasion. Future conquered. Commencing planetary invasion. Planetary invasion successful. And Goldgrass is the final one. No orders. Oops. No, they're doing it. They should be anyway. Yeah, I can see the little craft on their way down. <laughs> I don't know why that one's taking so long. There they go anyway. Commencing planetary invasion. Excellent. So that's the system done. And then it's just the Nexus left. Is that it then? I think that's it. This is the Colden Consortium, by the way, that are getting this territory. I'm totally happy with that. It's fine. Uh, Shariot. Shariot's got some stuff left that we haven't taken. God damn. And then we have Unaria as well. Right, land on Shariot, please. Another one, please. Go to Unaria. And one other one, go to this one. This is so micro -y, but there you go. Hopefully that's sorted it pretty much all out. We're going to then move and jump with classes three all the way up to Orin. You can't jump yet, though. We have to wait four, three, two, one. And get to Orin. All right, good. That should see pretty much all these territories fall away. I am heavily neglecting the... What should we call it? Wow, well, lost all those habitats, I guess. That's fine, of course. Come on, game. I'm trying to pause you. There we go. That's something else that also happens. When I try to move the camera, I'm like hitting pause. It just doesn't seem to register it. All right, anyway, so... That seems to be the... No, that's the fallen ones. A pirate fleet. Okay. Well, the moon moves on then. We've conquered this. There's nothing left to conquer here. There is out here, though. Wow, it's just like a series of invasions all across the galaxy. It's nice to see, though, the Dacorites are moving their transport fleets now a little bit, so hopefully they can speed this process up. But what are we up to now? Look at that. It's just pat tiny patches. Gateway constructed. Excellent. This is Rubicon, right? Yes, it is. The Rubicon gateway is up and running. Let's get that Zro in the system. I might as well, for the fun of it, do some upgrades and improvements to the fleets that are waiting at the star field of Mars. Fleets enhanced. These are the um, unique craft, by the way, that reside at Augusta. All these little unique ships that we got from relics, from events, from archaeological digs. 
God, this place is a nightmare. <laughs> it's cool, though. All right, good stuff. Still no word from those um, progenitors, the other fallen empire up there, so they're just chilled. Chilled out. All right, everyone has their orders, as far as I can tell. Unemployment on Delphi, so that's one of the Ringworld segments. Upgraded. New technology discovered. Oh, we haven't got a tech research in a while. A dimensional wave cannon. So what do you have? The Titanic dimensional wave cannon. So that's the next level up. The light of destruction. What is that? The ultimate particle lance. Gotta be honest, it doesn't seem that crazy. But maybe I'm just not the stats guy I should be. I don't know. It doesn't seem like that good. Let's go with the Titanic dimensional wave cannon. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> this one seems to have like better damage or a bit higher average damage, less chance of it, whatever, not being as good. But this has more higher maximum threshold damage. They're both the same accuracy. One has higher tracking than the other, this one. I'll just go with this one. This is the one I prefer, so I'll just do this. I'm f Although now I'm starting to question, but it's fine. Let's do that either way. The economy is still super stable. Super stable. Alloys are great. Energy credits is great. Everything's fine. We still haven't even like built up the next level of the star lifter if we wanted to get more even more minerals another thousand mm -hmm. minerals so we're fine for minerals for a long time as well all right planetary invasions the final invasions are occurring all over the place uh, let's just pay attention up here because this one i'm neglecting quite a bit oh we've actually got this territory i feel like i should give that over to the let's see can we transfer territories No, I don't think we can while we're at war, so we might have to just... I could just remove it, to be honest. I'm surprised they didn't get it. They would have had the claim on it. It's not a reason I got this. Not really. Alright, let's find the army, see what they're doing. Okay, so there's conquerors. Just go there, then. I thought I already split you up and told you what to do. Guess not. It doesn't help as well. Like, obviously things are much slower because of all these storms. Sublight speed is slowed down. I think 50%. Yeah. Planet conquered. Alright, that's Karnvoss taken. There's still another one in here, is there? Oh man, I look forward to now in between episodes on this one. Kind of just putting together the fleets necessary now to go take challenge the fall the awakened empires. I don't know if we're strong enough to do it though. With the attack moons, maybe. And when we get all the upgrades in place, then hopefully. It's just kind of hard to tell though, because obviously they had 1.5 million fleet power last time we looked at them. That's gonna be a big pitched battle. I feel like all combined, I guess we do have that. But I don't know, their attack moons might just like instant kill our flagship, for instance, and then we lose 200,000 fleet power, you know? All our eggs are kind of in just a few baskets. Although I suppose theirs would be too. They've got attack moons. They're probably worth 200k at the least. And that one of that Planercraft one's probably like 500,000. So online. maybe if you take one of those out, then suddenly the power is like just vastly diminished. These guys haven't even left this system yet. What's going on? Am I misclicking? Maybe I am. Land on that planet, please. Or are they just retaking it with the one fleet? That could be the case, too. Right. Let's break you guys out, then. Go there. Go to Shrubbery. They've got their transports as well. Hopefully they just go to New Hope or something. Oh my god. I missed the days of just countless anomalies, which I couldn't read <laughs> in time. Hey, it's the new year. <laughs> Another year has passed. Ah, at least we're getting through the years. Oh, there's the galactic market. Who would have thought? We're voting to relocate that right now. 800 days. Com 
commencing planetary invasion. All right, there's one over there, and that should be the. F oh, God, there's another one as well. Wish our invasion could be sped up. Commencing Need to learn how to get down here even quicker. I don't know why you can't just like why can't you just click like invade all? <laughs> and you can't queue them up, you know, one after the other. You have to just commit to it. Now I'm confused. Yeah, you're landing, right? Good. Planet conquered. Good. There, there seems to be gone as well. Oh, maybe we were in a battle. That might be the case because there's obviously more of us here now. Are you fighting right now? No, it says no armies. Oh, you know what I think is happening? I think when we come off the planet, we merge with the other transports in the system. That could be the case. This wormhole is the one that leads all the way up to Tenrithan. There's three energies Commencing sitting there, hanging about. Invasion. I've never seen just so many invasion notifications. <laughs> Almost done though, look at that. We are really, really close now. D another dynamic core igniter. Interesting. Oh, there they are. 39,000. Let's go. Let's chase them down. Fight this fight one more time. I'm going to be a bit risky. I'm only going to focus on this. I'm not going to look away. But I want the moon to jump first. I want to get the moon in combat before we get in combat. Alright, what are we up to? 4,147 pops. We've gained 600 pops so far. 600 pops. It's insane. We've actually increased our admin cap by 200. But we've also increased um, the Empire Sprawl by about 300. So... Right, we're gonna wait for that planet or moon to come out of here. And once it begins its jump, then we'll begin our jump too. God. Alright. I thought I told a construction ship to go up there and get that, and it still hasn't happened. Right, the dynamic cores have been built. I don't want to ignite them. Maybe in future, but planet conquered. It's not something I'm really focused on right now. All right, planet conquered. That should be that territory done. It's our wormhole now, and I think that's pretty much going to be it after we land on these last little bits. That's taken. So grasslands. All right, let's get back to our fleet. Our moon. All right, cool, bear with me. I'm just gonna take a drink while this is going. Construction online. Oh my God, we've been doing an hour almost already. Jeez. All right. As soon as it makes the jump, seven, there we go, it's gone. So we're gonna go now with it. We're right behind it. It's awesome. All right, we're in combat straight away. I think really at this distance, we're just going to deploy the striker. Oh no, it's the enemy's right there in front of us. Whoa, there's the whirlwind missiles. So cool. And the major fleets here as well now. Commencing planetary invasion. so fast they actually we, they didn't lose anything see am i looking at this wrong again they looked like they definitely did Construction online. now it says more stuff maybe we have to wait till the starport's done strange i don't know i'm not sure what's up with that all right well we've taken them out there anyway so let's just keep pushing back to this last spot
what do we got in terms of armies? Nothing. That's a mega structure, and then a little bit there. So let's just transfer a couple out. Great. All right. We haven't got the message yet for the end of the Order of Enlightenment, but we should be getting close. We're landing on their... what I think is their final world, I think? Ooh, like... Because we took Orem, and there doesn't seem to be anything here. Look, it did give us a new mega art installation, which is nice. It's a nice buff to Unity. There is a lot of debris all over the place as well. Yeah, I don't know why that is. Some of them landed, but not all of them. Invasion. Must be my mistake moving both. Oh no, I remember now. Yeah, I did move both and chose one to land. It's fine. Looks like they actually have armies on this one. Planetary invasion. All right, well, the rest of us are down now as well, and Velosa Gavius is taking over. They've actually got psionic armies here too. They're quite powerful. All right, that should be them done. Yeah, there is something. Yeah, that must be it. Sorry to keep going on about this, but like, unless we're on this planet, are we? Oh no, the battle's going on. Okay, okay. I'm going crazy. Let's get them over to help. Not that it's really going to change anything now. Alright, so that's the machine uprising, I think, about to be done. And then this should be the Order of Enlightenment about to be done. Which means that, essentially, the Carillion regulators are going to be on their own. They won't have any more allies. And the same with the... Uh, Corn restores. Attack moon movement systems installed. Excellent. So, let's get these two things moving. 1400 days for you. 1400 days for you. Seems like longer than I remember it, but okay. So, the two moons are going to be ready. 1400 days. We could even build a gateway down here and just get them out of here, like, immediately. That might not be a bad idea, actually. That would speed things up. Because we're pretty far from a gateway down here. Did we get the message? We haven't got the message. Are they done? Are they dead? Is that it? I think that's it. I didn't see the message for them gone. But like, if we go to diplomatic map mode... There, from what I can tell, on first glance, there is no more Order of Enlightenment. They are gone. Out with a whimper, I guess. Not much of a, a statement from them. Now, we do also have the this last little planet to take, which is just waiting on finishing off. Two defense armies left. All right. Planetary invasion successful. Is that it for the robots? I think this is the last system for the robot uprising. Pretty sure. Let's just have a last little zoom in. Oh, no, no, no. There is a planet here. Damn. Falk it. All right. We're not ending till we take that last planet. Can we jump to it? We can. Okay, cool. Should be a pretty quick one then. There's a planet here too. Alright, hang on then. If that's the case... Before you jump... Stop. Pause it. Pause it, please. <laughs> before you jump, split. So they're still doing their jump. I thought I just told them to stop, but that's okay. And then we'll get these guys to do a jump as well to here. 
Ugh. Jump. Click. Good. Alright. So that's going to allow us to take both of those at the same time, wrap that up, and then, you know what we're going to do? We'll do it right now. Sad to say, sad to see it happen, but we're going to say goodnight to the Pax Romana 1 fleet. They have served their purpose. And to the Pax Romana 2 fleet, you have also served your purpose. And in between episodes, I'm going to design out new Federation fleets with the new Jump Drive 3. And we're going to start gathering the fleets together, mustering everything together for what we need to go then attack the Corinth Restorers. We don't need those fleets anymore. I want to now update these things in between episodes. The actual designs. Uh, but that's what we're going to build next, essentially. I'll have to tell all these ships to come back as well. Um, so what do we got? We could do a jump, I think, onto that pirate fleet, help them out. Alright, the transports have made it, so Falkid, let's land on them. And then these guys are on Imar Stone. Alright, cool. Man, that was just like an hour of landing armies. <laughs> I appreciate people bearing with the series in these dark times. <laughs> But we are all building, right? We're building towards this big battle, this big attack. 1.5 million. I'm really looking forward to seeing that Century Ray finish, then we can finally see where they are. 247 days to go. So yeah, next episode we're going to uncover all the galaxy, bring everything to the star field of Mars, gather everything up, all the moons and attack moons and all of that are going to get back here as well. Everyone's going to get in position. And then we're going to decide, Carillion Regulators or Corinth Restorers. Of course, Corinth Restorers are pretty close by. And obviously border us, first and foremost. It might be the more apt choice. Sadral Exiles building Colossus projects is kind of concerning. Especially since they're disgusting neutrals. Alright, Galactic Community. Uh, Senate in Recess. Did we do the locate market thing? I guess so. So the event's going to run to decide where that goes, right? No, it got moved already? Did I miss out on this? This is some bullshit, if that's the case. I hope the event chain kicks off again. Because Senate's been in recess for quite a while. Maybe I missed it. I don't know. I don't understand why I'm not like... Do I have to... Say something at Saul and say like, I want to be... You know, the market leader or something? I feel like you do. I, I don't know. I feel like when the event runs, it's like, okay, nominate yourself. Maybe I missed it. I think time would have stopped and it would have appeared and I would have read it, but... Hmm? I don't know. Okay, anyways. Commencing planetary invasion. The final invasions are beginning. Haha, <laughs> look at that. It's uh, all of our corvettes just going in circles around their big dreadnought or whatever it is. Galleon class firing all their missiles into it. Now that looks cool. That looks so cool. Look at this one guy, he's way ahead of it. Commencing planetary invasion. <laughs> that looks awesome. Because unlike the flak, the flak guns we looked at in the last episode, these ones are actually traveling independent of where we are. Maintain formation! Oh, they have 37,000 health, I don't know. Planet conquered. I believe we'll do it, we're not really taking that much damage. Okay, it's not the end yet. It's just these two to go. That's the end of the machine uprising, I think, then. I'm also keeping one of the machine planets. It's called One. Uh, it's a machine world. It's a straight-up machine world, and I've moved some machine pops out to it. It's assembling new ones at the moment, so maybe in future we'll build something interesting here. But right now, I've never done a zoom in on one of these, but they're pretty cool. Just like an artificial world, I guess. It's not built out of scratch, but it's a world that's being covered in, in like, computation nodes or whatever. I don't know. And, uh, yeah, we're still wiping out the ancients here. How many left? There's 139 of them. I have to redistribute these guys around as well. Clear them out faster. Let's have a look at our demographics really quickly. What are we up to now? 
We are at 45%. Wow. Doesn't look like that. That doesn't look like that at all. 45%. That can't be right. Look at that. It's like, you know, 75%, if anything. Strange. That is 2,000. Yeah, it's 2,007 pops out of 4,400. I don't know. I feel like that pie chart's just way off. I don't know what 2,000 out of 4,400 is. Would it be 45%? Yeah, that, that would be. So it's just the pie chart that's incorrect then. Okay. Weird. I feel crazy now looking at that. I'm like, am I just not able to read a pie chart? But I'm pretty sure Planet I am. Conquered. Oops. Planet Concrete, is that the end of the machine uprising? Yes. End of the Aerobot Incorporators. All right, we did it. So there we go. We've got this horrible patch of territory in the middle of the Dakarite fragments now, but that's the end of that war. And that is pretty much it. So if we look at diplomatic map mode now, now all of the fighting is located just out here, just in that lower quadrant of the galaxy, the southeastern quadrant. And we can see some activity. Oh shit. The Veldener Zealots are about to get hit by quite a lot. Construction online. There they are. Now it looks like they're not actually going for them, they're just moving systems. But they might end up engaging with them. You think at that range the attackmans... There we go. Let's just have a look at this combat. Unfortunately for the Veldener Zealots, they are after getting caught off guard. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. What a day. Now we can't see it here anymore. All right. Exciting stuff. We are one system over the Kosher Trade League with 82,000. They are dead. This is the way they were heading a moment ago, actually. So, Unless they were going to Kosk, actually. They might have been going to Kosk. Well, either way, we'll find out in the next episode. All right. Thank you guys very much for watching. Um, sorry about the little co couple interruptions there in the middle. And sorry that things have been a bit slow, but you got to land on these planets. What can I do? We're, we're taking them out. So I'm going to go through basically... All of my fleets upgrade as best as we can, get everything in order, and then commission the upgrades at the Starfield of Mars. We have 100,000 alloys ready to distribute. We're going to first put them into the Federation fleets if we can, then take care of our own fleets because, of course, the Federation fleets are free to upkeep. And if we have a look at the fleets themselves, 400 naval capacity. Now, the only way we could improve that further is if we went up to high um, centralization. But we don't have the cohesion currently to handle that, I don't think. I could try it and see what happens. Um, basically, we'd be dependent on other empires giving us... Because I am I think I've assigned all my envoys here. Yeah. So we've loads of empires. Hopefully, if they would just assign some of their envoys, then things would be okay. But they will kind of need to do that. If we want to maintain that, that lets us get high. And that would hurt cohesion even further. So we're going to go from... We're going to lose 2.25 from, yeah, increasing. So we need 2.25. So that would still be... Basically, two envoys would keep us positive and would be fine. Actually, I think one envoy would keep us positive. Because we'd go down to... Yeah, I think one envoy. So if any other empire just gave us one envoy, then we'd be at 0.15. Um, the cohesion that would just keep us positive I'm willing to roll that dice so we'll check it out in the next episode all right thank you very much for watching I'll see you in the next one